But I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I'm Mary Ann Ashenbrenner. I uh, own a company called Waterlink Web. And this is the Portland WordPress meetup. And we meet once a month. And uh, we're having this on Zoom because of uh, COVID-19. But the advantage of that is, is we'll have an actual recording of the presentation that people can go through and uh, look at later and learn from, you know, for months and potentially years down the line. So that's a very good thing. I miss meeting with all our group <laughs> of meetup people. I, I've uh, really missed that, but uh, it's, good to, it's good to be able to get this presentation together. And I think this is a presentation that small businesses could take advantage of. Um, you have a small business, maybe you don't have the money to hire somebody to do a, a WordPress website for you. Well, I'm gonna go through a lot of things and, and show you how to do the free WordPress 2020 theme and really kind of customize it to yourself. Um, give you at least a chance to get ahead on that. So um, Doug Ewan is my, uh, it works also with me uh, as a volunteer helping run the Portland WordPress meetup. And uh, Doug will be fielding the questions. So if you have a question, uh, as I go through the presentation, raise your hand and in the chat room, just raise your hand. And then uh, when I get to a section where I'm ready to stop, I will call on you. And what we're going over to today is uh, WordPress 2020. It's a new theme. I kind of have fallen in love with it. And um, in the years I've been doing web, building websites, I probably, for my own personal website, totally transitioned it to different themes, maybe three or four times, five, I, five, I don't know, several times I've had different themes on this. And um, after I started working with WordPress 2020, I decided, yeah, I like this theme. So I'm going to uh, kind of rebuild my own WordPress site. So we're here today, I have a client's website and my website I'll be going over. And the three aspects I'm going to work at, look at today are templates, because this theme offers three different templates, and then fonts, because um, you may not like the font with WordPress 2020. And so I'm going to show you how to change it. And then also fixed navigation. It doesn't have a fixed navigation, but I'm going to show you how to install fixed navigation on this theme. So uh, fixed navigation, of course, means that when you go up the page, as you can see here, the um, uh, navigation follows you so people can click to different aspects of the page as they go up. Well, let's start with templates. So actually, I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of the WordPress theme itself. So when you install 2020, if you go into your website, oh, I'm logged out. Let me do this. Come on. OK. I'm going to pause the video for just a second and get logged back in. OK. So I'm in the dashboard of the Pacific Home Inspections, and I've known this client for quite a few years. A great guy, he's been a home inspector for since 1989. Had an old HTML built website, didn't um, do any changes on it for a long time. And so he asked it to, to be redone because he wanted to come up better in search engine optimization. Um, he had done some old, you know, SEO from 10 years ago, which now is degraded and um, it was preventing him from coming up in search optimization because of some tricks his old SEO guy had done. So I rebuilt the website. And, um, but he, he uh, this is the website we re rebuilt. And then I'm gonna go in and show you the uh, WordPress 2020. And you go to appearance and then customize, okay. So site identity, what that is, that's where the logo is right here. His logo, as you can see, is very intricate. And I needed to enlarge this. So I'll show you in CSS how to do that, just to make it bigger so that you could actually see it uh, clearly. Um, the other thing is when I uploaded that, I checked the retina logo, and I think that does make it look sharper on, at least on my screen, I have an iMac. 
This here is the icon, the site icon. And basically his logo, he didn't have a copy of it big enough. A and B is too intricate to really work well as a site icon. So I went ahead and created one for him and loaded it up to the, uh, um, just left to the icon where you can see it just left. It's kind of a nice little thing to add in. Um, colors. So on this, we picked a site background color and a header footer background color. And I picked this off of his old website. It was a good color from there. Theme options. And um, this just basically is not a lot in here. This, if you want to show a search bar in the header, you can do that. Uh, he is not running a blog on here, so there wasn't really any reason to mess with any of that. Cover template. Um, I'll show you how this works on another on my other website because I'm using that on my other website. He chose not to have a cover template on his. There is an overlay capacity on there though. I'll show you how that works later. Background image. Um, didn't use one on either website, but you can always experiment with that if you're uh, choosing to uh, use WordPress 2020. Menus, I always go into the menus bar to do menus and I'll show you where that is later. I don't mess with the menus in here. Widgets areas, there's a footer widget one and a footer widget two. If you scroll down, here's his footer widgets. Um, I put a form on one so people could contact him. And um, homepage settings. And this just basically says the homepage is gonna be this. There's no post page for him. And then additional CSS, and you can see there's a lot of additional CSS for this client, quite a bit. And that's good. So let's talk about that. That's kind of a walkthrough of what the uh, theme does. I'm going to show you something on mine, though. So you have a walkthrough on my website. We go to um, theme options on not theme options. I want to do this one. Um, content options. There's a lot of options in here and I do have a blog page. I don't use it a lot, but I do have a blog page. And so if you go there, you can kind of see how this works. So I have set to display the date and it displays. This one's a sticky one. I set to display categories. This is the Waterlink web category. We can go to another one. Here's the latest one I just did. It would display this category, which is Learn WordPress. Display tags. If you put a tag on there, that's set to display. Um, display the author. That's my name right there. And um, so that's just to let you know that the featured image is also set to display. So if I was click on this particular one here, this particular blog, and this is the featured image on this blog. It comes up here on this theme, which is kind of really cool. I really like how that shows up. And uh, so that's just the two different ways of using the content options in the WordPress 2020 theme. Okay, so now let's go and talk about templates. So I am actually going to go into some of the pages, get out of the customizer. And I'm going to talk about, first of all, the full width template. So here on this client, he picked a full width template on here. And I'm going to go to edit page and you can see that. And there's full width template. We also have options of a cover template or the default. Now, I, it doesn't look the same on the back side as it does when you view the page, but you can see it's a nice wide template. This is a little bit harder to read than the default template is. And I'll just show you the default template. If I go to the testimonials page, you see how thin that is? That's the default template. And we have found where that testing has shown that shorter, uh, lines are easier for people to read. So when you get into longer lines like this, it's a little bit difficult. 
So what I did was I break, broke it up, made short paragraphs, created a couple columns, again, short paragraphs, uh, bullet points. That way it's not really that hard for, for people to read for this. If I had had a lot of content, let's say it was a long blog post with a lot of information, I would not want to have that in a full width uh, template because it would truly be difficult to read. If you go to his home inspections page, Again, this is the default template with the uh, uh, images uh, styled to the left, and it's really easy to read. You don't think that that's gonna be a difficult thing to read because of that. So that's one uh, thing that's, you've seen the full width. I should tell you one more thing before I get out of the full width and show you the cover template. This client, um, didn't really like the white space. There was more white space over here that he wanted. And so I did a little trick with the CSS and you go to entry content. I looked for that and I made it 1400 pixels max width. It still works fine on a cell phone. I've tested it. It is very responsive. But when you put this dot entry dash content, you could make it a little bit wider than it would have been otherwise. So the site background color is the blue, but I made the entry content white background color. And I did that so that you could, he likes, he likes this look. That's, I designed it really specifically for him and what he wanted his website to look like. I think that when you're building a website, it's really good to reflect the client and their tastes and vision. So that's, you've seen the full width uh, template, you've seen the, the um, Default, this is my website. I'm gonna go back here to show you. This is a cover template, and I really think this is stunning. Uh, I love the way it works. I um, put, the, you put your, your navigation shows up well, and then I again have a narrower template on here, just because I thought that worked better. And, I'll show you some more things about this page. To create the cover template, we're gonna to go to edit this page and I'll show you how to do it. So basically here's the page and to all you have to do is add a featured image and make it cover template. And then you'll have a nice full width cover up there to, um, to show off, I guess. <laughs> The other thing I did on this page, and I think was kind of fun, is I added a block that has multiple blocks in it. So this is a little bit about Waterlink Web, and you have um, my, my logo, and a, a title, and then some content, and another title, and some more content, and so forth. And it's all in one block without any spacing. And the way I did that, was I went down here to this section and I added a block called, I won't make big changes on here, but I added the layout elements. Let's see, it is the group block. And then I started adding the plus sign and it just kind of built from there. And if I click in here, you can see this is the group block sign and there's color settings over here. And I made the text color white and I made the background color, uh, this color for my logo. So to do that, just go into custom color and add the color right there and then uh, get out of it and you'll have it, you'll see it happen. So that's always a good thing. Um, any other questions on templates? Doug? Um, Anybody raise I don't see anyone with their, anyone, uh, if you have a question, you wanna raise your hand. No questions on templates? None at all? Okay. How about that one about the cover image on that, on that the cover template? Oh, uh, yes. Doug Ryder? Just raise his hand. Yeah. Hi, Miriam. Uh, so you you have your site. Are you running different templates on different pages then? 
right? Yes. You have the cover for the well, homepage and... Yes, the cover is on the homepage. And when you do a cover template, it still goes to the default below the cover. And right. then I okay. actually made, and I'm still messing around with this, and I'll probably change it off and put it into columns, but this is the, this is the regular full size template right here. Um, you mean, is that the default template? This is no, this is oh. not the default. Oh, it's the other one, the full yeah, size. Yeah, this is the, okay. let me show you a default. I think this is default. This is default. See how narrow it is by comparison? So that, that's, uh, I'm, and I can switch this back and forth. I can edit it and go back the other way. But I think I, I'll, I could also, what I would probably do, I probably will do, I just, is create two columns here so that it's easier to read and have one column and then another column. And so it'll be sh shorter uh, space in between. Um, it won't be as wide, even on the full width template. And I should tell you, I did another thing just to show you some CSS on this. Let's customize. Okay. So on this, our process page, when I first finished it, well, it was already, you know, I just brought it over from a new uh, website, from an old website. So I, this is, it was more of a distance here. And I thought it was like too much padding in there. So I looked for the CSS code and I added this, reduces padding at the top of the pages. And I reduced the padding. So it's not as, as deep. I'll show you how this looks when you, um, I'll publish it like this and you'll see the difference. How it comes out of the box versus how it looks um, after a little bit of CSS. So here's the R process page. And let me refresh the screen here. And it's, it's, it just was further down than I wanted it to be. So if I go back here to Appearance Customize and go to here and put that back in and then publish it, it, it is a little bit less padding on top there. Less than I, and I think that that's good here in this, in this particular theme. Um, what else do I want to talk about? Uh, anything else on templates? Anybody else have questions on that? Uh, Dean's got a question. Sure, Dean. Yeah, hi there. Thanks, Marianne. Um, so, so many people are, are looking at these sites on mobile. And mm -hmm. I guess, you know, we, we obviously we can design a site and then we can go look at it in mobile. But as you go into this from the front, from the beginning, can you give us some broad ideas of how uh, some of these options play into the mobile space. So for example, that big Golden Gate Bridge that, you know, wh what happens to those things? What do we need to know and think about right up front? That is, that's a really good question. So this is actually the St. John's Bridge, but that's okay. So, so here, we'll just make it smaller. So you can kind of see it still, there's a lot of scroll down from there. But you can see how nice this works on mobile. It works great. If we kick the menu, there's, let's go to the R process page. And that works great on mobile too. So, so, so maybe I can ask the question the opposite way. Is there something that you would caution us to steer away from that's maybe a little less mobile friendly? You know, I think when you get uh, the WordPress 2020 theme, it's gonna be, Fabulous on mobile. That's, that's, I mean, the WordPress is not going to give you a website that isn't. That's my okay. answer to that. Anybody else, uh, Doug, one of the Dougs want to comment or? No? Okay. So that was about templates. And I think, you know, have fun with it. Sorry, we got a, we got another 
question from, okay, uh, sure. from another Doug. Yeah, hi. Uh, you mentioned about adding possibly a second column of text on a page. Is that a, something that can be done with the uh, built-in tools without having to do CSS? I would say your question one more time, please. Okay, you talked about possibly adding a second column of text on one of those pages earlier. Um, can that be done without having to go to CSS? Yes, I'm going to do it right now for you. Oh. I'm going to shut up you and be all Thank you. So um, go to add block. Okay, and there's zillions of blocks, but this will be a layout element block. And you'll go to columns. Let's say I want two columns there, right? So I'm going to put this in one column, just that. And I'm going to put the paragraph block in. And you can see it added one paragraph block and another paragraph block. And then I'm going to put this header in here. And I, I'm not going to, I, this is probably not how I want to keep it, but I would add a header block. And I will probably make this an H2. And then I'm going to hit the plus sign underneath, give myself a paragraph block. And I'm going to do all this, OK? All that. And this isn't going to look great, but we're just going to come up, go with it. <laughs> and then I'm going to do one more thing, because I think with columns, it really has to be full width. OK, it is full width. So I'm going to hit update. <laughs> And we will see this with this uh, recent change. So you see you have two columns here. And it's obviously I'm not going to, I'm going to go back. I want to fix this and do some other changes. But this is how you add two columns. Pretty easily done. So let's get out of here. And all I'm going to do here to get rid of this is I will go to here. I'll go remove block, remove block. I could probably do it more quickly if I just hit the whole thing. Hit delete. No, it didn't want to do it. Delete. No, I have to remove blocks to do it. But yeah, that's you kind of get the idea. You can really do so much with, with uh, these Gutenberg blocks. Oh, and you can even make a picture go fold width if you want. I'll show you that on another page. OK. And so how do I get this whole two, two areas to go away? I'll show you. Little trick I figured out. OK, so I type in some content. I go back to it. I hit delete. There we go. I'm back to this. And this, this is a fun thing, too, in case you're not aware of it. This is a, um, a, a block that I've saved with my contact information in there. And I could add that over and over. Let me add it right here. I go down here to reusable blocks, contact info. There it is again. And to make something uh, reusable, you just go to here and you click add to reusable blocks and then you give it a name. And you could, that could be a reusable block that will be you know, you use over and over. OK, so I'm going to talk about fonts now. I think we've got our before, template before, questions. Oh, one more. Sorry, Marianne, before you go on, uh, we've got a couple more questions. OK. Uh, Daniel's next. Hey, Marianne, uh, when you were editing in WordPress, the uh, content area that you're editing was quite narrow compared with what uh, a user sees. 
So when you're in WordPress and you're editing these blocks, can you make the width, uh, the editing width much wider? Um, could I, are you asking if I could make the editing width wider? Yeah, so like when you uh, edit the page, it's showing a very narrow width that's not realistic to what you're actually seeing when, when a visitor goes to the page. So can that width be changed to make it more one-to-one? Uh, -one? Um, let's see if this makes a difference. Not really. I mean, it's still, it's, it's a little bit wide. Yeah, this is actually better. So this is full screen mode. So you, to do that, you click up here where it says more tools and options in the upper right corner. And you go to full screen mode. So with that, the first sentence ends with the word gives clients. Mm -hmm. But when you actually browse the, uh, the page as a visitor, how wide is that area? Let's go and uh, preview it. And so it goes way past gives clients. Yeah. It has so more words. It doesn't words. really go the full width. You have to kind of look at it. And then I have this spread across a pretty big computer screen. So um, I prefer, though, I'll be honest, I prefer, and maybe it's just because I've been doing this for a long time, I prefer this mode where it's, I don't have full screen on. I like being able to see the other stuff over there. That's just me. Um, may, I, may I make a comment real quick yeah. on this? Um, this is true that when you're in editor mode or block mode within the dashboard, the backend dashboard of WordPress, it's always going to look not as the same width and dimensions and margins and such as how you have your theme page for the content set up to be. Uh, but that's true in any theme in any WordPress. Yeah. So this is not, this is not a, a fault of this particular theme. It, it, it happens no matter what theme you have in the back end dashboard of WordPress. Yeah, I think there's, I think there's some CSS that you can add that will make the uh, WordPress editing uh, area wider to give you less uh, discontinuity between uh, a visitor and uh, someone editing the page. You can always hit preview though too. You make some changes, hit preview, and see what it looks like in preview mode. You know. Yeah. So you so, get the surprise when you hit the preview. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get the surprise. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Um, I want to go to fonts. Let's talk about fonts. Oh, sorry, we still have another question. Okay. Uh, Rick is next. Yeah, just uh, from the standpoint of the cover uh, template. Okay. Is, have you seen anyone use something like Revolution Slider for the cover? I have not. Do you know if it's compatible? I do not know. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, I can't answer that. I, um, there, there's times when you want to use a slider, but I am not a huge fan of them. Um, often they don't help people. There isn't a, a close connection between having a slider and increasing your, um, your click through rate. It, it, it doesn't seem to help your click through rate. Um, from my, I, I belong to SEM PDX and heard a presentation on it. And, and I'm not sure that that's really a positive benefit. It can I also- agree, but it's what the client wanted. Yeah, I, and I understand that. And so I don't know that you can do a slider on this. Probably you can, I haven't tried it. Okay, fonts. Let's talk about fonts. So I'm going to bring up the original WordPress 2020 theme so you can see what it looks like. And this font is pretty blocky. If you look at this here, it's, it's kind of a nice blocky big font. And uh, it's big, okay? 
So my client didn't like it so big. He said, it's too big, <laughs> make it small. So I went in and, um, where did I do that? Reduces the padding, okay, wait, no. Help the navigation, so no, that's it. There it is. And I like, you always, if you do make changes in CSS, please uh, notate them because you can find what you're looking for. So here it is, makes the H1 and H4 header smaller. And um, I think I put this in parentheses because that's the size they were to begin with. The H1 was 8.4 REMs. And I made them smaller. I made them six for H1, H2, and just brought them down. Um, so, and I also did that with the, uh, with the paragraphs too. I think I made the actual content a little bit smaller too. So that's just, it's easy to do. On my own website, I actually have, because of my, my uh, logo I use, I use uh, Century Gothic font for it. And in the old theme I had, it just allowed me to just, it had a theme, uh, font picker in it, and I just picked the font and went with it. But this theme, I had to bring it in. So if you go to, um, to WordPress, one of our Portland WordPress meetup, and you go to November 2017 events, you'll see a big presentation that I gave on how to bring in a new font to a website. Now, there were like three ways of doing it, and I went over each one, but I'm going to talk today about one of the ways that I brought it in. So, uh, the first thing I did was I, was I looked, how much is it going to cost me to buy this font? for this website. And it would be $140 to buy all the iterations of the font. And I didn't want to spend that. So I went to, let me get this just a little bit smaller here. Minimize that. Okay. I went to, and got it for free, to Adobe type font and picked out Century Gothic and looked at it and said, that's what I want. And then I went to, and this is actually a, uh, a screenshot of that presentation from November 2017. Our, our WordPress meetup events are a really good repository of information. There's some really good stuff in there. So then I add font to the web and I named the project and I added the font I wanted. I said, create on there and then next screenshot it said you're all done and it gave me a link use these to use these fonts in your web page code this into the header tag of your html okay so i copied that now some uh themes have a nice little HTML space in the uh, in their WordPress. If you go to appearance and you go to customize, there'll be like a place there to put your HTML header code, your HTML footer code, and you're all done. This theme does not. So I did another way of doing it is I added a plugin, and the plugin I added was insert headers and footers. And so after I went to insert headers and footers, let me find it here. Is it under appearance? Let's see, appearance. Maybe it's under settings. There it is. I installed insert header footers and there is the link. Okay. All this does is it helps my site to call on Adobe Typekit for this font as opposed to calling on Google fonts for this font. That's all that, that, all that does. Normally, uh, lots and lots of websites call on Google fonts and uh, mine doesn't. Mine calls on Google on Adobe Typekit because I put that in the header. Then I went into CSS and here you'll see changes the font in the primary menu. And there's a Century Gothic font. 
and and I got that by just looking through the CSS with after I'm going to actually make a CSS change today so you'll see something and learn a little bit if you don't know how to do that um, and then I went to my h1 h2 h3 h4 and I put in font family, century gothic, and then if it's not that available, uh, sans serif. I put in the font size and the font weight for each one. So it goes from 50 p px uh, to 40, 30, etc. And then on paragraph, century gothic, sans serifs, 22 uh, pixels, and that created my fonts on this website. However, it did not get all of them. If you go to blog, some of you may have noticed this when I was in the blog earlier. This is not the Century Gothic font. This is the original font for this website. So I'm going to right click on this, okay? And then I'm going to hit inspect. And if you have a, the, the Google developer tool on your Chrome browser, you'll be able to do the same thing. So this is a class called H2 Entry Title Heading Size 1. And you can see it right there, just up above the area that's highlighted. You see H2, it goes away when I move it, but it says H2 dot entry dash title dot heading dash size 1. So I'm going to actually do that right now and show you guys how to do it. I'm writing it down so I can dot heading dash size one dash one. Okay. The other thing to do here is I can, you see it's font size right here. I'll show you, I could add a plus and just make it get smaller. You see it, H2, entry tile, dash heading, dot heading dash size one um font size um we're gonna make it one rem look how little it got <laughs> went to one it's very tiny but all i want to capture is this right here okay that's what i need so i'm going to put command c copy that and then I'm going to go back here. Let me close out of that for a second. Hopefully this will all work for us smoothly. Sometimes you have to fiddle around with fonts a little bit. And I'm going to go in here. I'm going to put this, hit return. Oh wait, I didn't want to do that. Okay. So now I'm just going to copy this in there, font family. We're going to do it, font family, font size right here from our other H2 that I already styled. And this might work, it might not. Let's see, I didn't see a change here. So let's hit publish and see what it does. And it changed it, didn't it? It worked just perfectly. So let me go back and actually look at it on the site. We'll go to visit site. Go to blog news. Okay, it didn't change it there. It changed it here. So somehow I have to get this off the page. So there's going to be a little bit more um, searching this out to figure out what it is. It's not just that, it probably has to do with this or something like the entry header. Ah, this might be it. Uh, Marianne, I think yeah. you might have some extra code in the CSS. I may that you added. I think I saw it. some aligned content in there. Okay, well, let's see if we have it. Appearance, customize. Doug Ewan is really good with CSS. So, in fact, I've called Doug a couple times to get little helps. Okay, what do I have? So, in, ah, yeah, take right this there. out. Yep. We'll just take it out and we'll see what it did. Okay, 
it a second. Ah, it worked. See, you were right, dog. You knew exactly what it was. Let me get out of that. Okay. So uh, now let me publish this. Did it work? Mm, well, let's see if it works because this is the back end. It may work on the front end. And we'll go up here. And if not, I'm going to go out of this and, and we'll, I don't want to spend a long time on it. Oh, it worked. There it is. So there, you see how these all change from the big heavy font to now a lighter one that the, is the, is the um, Century Gothic. So that was, that's kind of, and sometimes you do have to fiddle around with a little bit to make it work. Um, and that's okay. But that's basically how you do it. Okay, do we have questions on fonts? Um, so I think I think Rick has you have your hand up from last time, or do you have a new question? Okay, I think I think Fada's next. Fada. Sorry, I had to unmute. Here I am with my Totino's pizza rolls. Mmm, they're yummy. Mm. <laughs> uh, so my question about the fonts was, do you, Marianne, have a Adobe Creative Suite license? I have one for photography only. Oh. Well, and, it might, it might and cover I, I actually, before I ever bought my license, I was able to do this. Oh, Adobe well, Typekit is still, um, I think it's free. That's kind of weird to me because most Adobe's fonts are kind of known for being proprietary and for pay. Um, so that's why I was asking that. I was also going to ask why you didn't go look for a similar free font on, on uh, Google fonts, which tend to be free for distribution? Um, I've done that in the past, like years ago when I, well, a couple of years ago when I rebuilt my site and I didn't see anything I liked as well as this that went with my, uh, my logo. I really wanted it to kind of look like the same font as my logo. I see. So that's why. Okay, um, it's just, I, I worry that Adobe fonts, people are going to run into, hey, uh, in certain cases, you're going to pay for this. Because that's kind of what Adobe's known for. Um, you know, I've done two websites using Adobe fonts, so I didn't have to pay for them. Now, that doesn't mean all their fonts are free. It means this one, the Century Gothic's free. And this is actually a font from monotype and so i could have purchased it from monotype and i could have used a plugin called um what's the name of it use any font uploaded that plugin purchased my uh, um, font from monotype uploaded a file using that plugin and been able to style the website using this font that way also so it's not really an Adobe font. It's just a font that Adobe um, has that it can use. OK. Any other questions on fonts? Uh, I don't think we have anyone else. OK. Oh, wait. <laughs> Doug Ryder. Yes, Doug. Unmute. Hi. Uh, Century Gothic is available on Google Fonts now. Oh, it wasn't when I checked earlier, yeah, like think, this week. Really? Really. Uh, I was looking at it right here. <laughs> well. Okay. Let me look. Google Fonts. Yeah. And they, they directed me to the monotype. good font. Okay, well, yeah, anything that's up it. on Google is free. So this is monotype. Yes. That doesn't mean you could download it here. I'm not so sure. Well, you know, you can. Um, anything that shows up there on Google can be downloaded. 
or should be. No, it says available from these are external foundries monotype. Wow, why are they putting that up there then? This is a this is a font that's used a lot, which is one yeah. reason I think I can get it from uh, uh, Adobe for free. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay. So Google is now putting fonts up there that are not free. Yeah, they don't actually sell. No, I know, but uh, okay. Yeah. Well, it is free. I got it from a Adobe Typekit for now. Yeah. And you know, at this point, it's free. I'm sure if it ever changes, they'll let me know. But <laughs> and then I'll, I don't. I just don't want to have to spend the money to buy it. And I think it's a pretty commonly available font. So fixed navigation. Now I chose not to do that with oh, my. Sorry, work. before before oh, you continue question? on, another okay. question, uh, Richard. Yeah, I uh, was looking at the chat. Daniel Payne uh, had a point. If you don't have the Century Gothic installed on your local system, will you be able to see that font change? Why wouldn't you? You don't see it in the, you do not see it in the dashboard. Okay. You actually only see it on the website. But he made a point that I don't see, he doesn't own Adobe fonts and cannot see your changes in his Google Chrome browser. So do you have to have that, do I have to have that font installed on my system to see your changes? Um, do you see a sans serif font? I mean, do you see it? Um, I, I'm sorry, I didn't try looking for it. I was just using his uh, uh, post in the chat. Yeah. Um, I'll just visibility testing but I think you're going to be able to see it. When I've done it before for other clients, you could see it on any browser. And what they, they were using a different one than Century Gothic, but Century Gothic is a pretty common font. It's not really that hard. And so a lot of browsers will have it. And if not, it'll be a different sans serif font that comes up. But yeah, I, I should, that's a good point. Uh, and, uh, Daniel raised, and I'll probably uh, check with some other people's uh, computers and see if they see it. And I, I, the reason why I asked, I took a, an Adobe Illustrator and Adobe InDesign class recently, and the instructor had instructed us if that we're using crazy fonts to make sure you turn turn it into an image, so that per, that the person doesn't have to have the font installed. Okay, I would be true, especially of designs. So like if I had a big, um, like a crazy font, let's say I had a big design font, a big uh, curly Q W with, you know, something fancy going across the screen. Yeah, you'd want that to be an image. Because okay. they may not have that font. And it may take a while to pull it from somewhere else anyway. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, any other questions on fonts? Nope. I think that's it. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to my client again. So this client very much wanted a um, navigation that scrolled down the page. And you can do this with CSS, but you know, you end up with the whole header and everything scrolling down the page and he didn't wanna take up a bunch of room just a little bit of a navigation scrolling down the page. Okay, easy to add. So we go over here to plugins. And this is the only plugins I have on this website. Not very many. Uh, this is my backup plugin. This is sort of the form people can contact him by. Um, this is for the social media buttons. I'm redirecting some pages that were on his old website. Um, oh, this is how I added the footer credit that says Waterlink Web. I'll show you how to use that too. This is SG Optimizer, which comes with SiteGround websites and makes sites faster. Um, when I first tested this site, it was at 90 out of 100. Um, and after I installed SG Optimizer, it was 96 out of 100, which is pretty fast. I'm quite happy with that. 
This is the sticky menu or anything on scroll. And this is where you add something that you want to scroll up and down the page and always be there for people. So if I go to, after I add sticky menu or anything, I go to, let me find it here now. It might be in the settings. Ah, oh, there it is, sticky menu. And basically I had right clicked on my mouse when I was looking at the website and I found that it was header navigation, navigation wrapper. And um, when it gets to a, a small screen size, you go ahead and don't have it be sticky because it, you don't need it on a, on a cell phone. So, but this is pretty self-explanatory and there are uh, tutorials online that you can read and look at and it'll tell you what to do. So anyway, I picked, I found the element, I create, added it in there, I went to the customizer after that, and I went to additional CSS, and where is it here? Helps the navigation, okay, that's the navigation here. Helps navigation show even on a white page. So I added, once I, once I did that, the navigation was scrolling down, but you'll see here, the navigation's white, correct? You couldn't see it. <laughs> so I went to helps the navigation show even on a white page, and I put that header off navigation wrapper, and I gave it a background color and a little bit of padding, just a little. And then uh, it has a blue background, and you can see it on a white page. So that's how I did the navigation. I'm gonna show you a couple other things with CSS while I'm in here. Uh, this div.site-description changes the color. It was a different color. And I changes, changed the color and also, uh, uh, yeah, that's all I changed was the color of it. So that would be white and be able to be seen. Um, this is the logo, it was, to, it was so little when let me, I'll just well, I don't want to show you what it happens. I'll show, I'll do it on my website. It gets really small if you don't have that on there. Um, so let me go back to my website and show you that. And I'll show you something else on my website too about the cover image, which I, then will be about done. So with for or for our last questions, I don't want to mess my client's website up. Okay, so we're here. Changes the custom logo. So I'm just going to put this out. And you see how little this gets without it? That's all the space that's really available for it. And so that's why you want to make it a little bit bigger. See, it's, now it's bigger enough you can read it. And um, what else? Storing the fonts. Oh, oh, the other thing I wanted to show you guys, cover template. So on a page with a cover template, it has an overlay. And you can change the color of that overlay if you want, however you want to change it. But this is what it'll look like if you keep it up there. That's a complete overlay. You barely see the uh, picture behind it. And the value of having the overlay on there is if you have writing up here, you'll be able to see the writing. Um, I have a, a dark enough picture that I, it doesn't matter. But you know, if I didn't have that, I would definitely want to have uh, some overlay on there. So that's what that overlay does. So any questions on the fixed navigation? You guys there? Questions on fixed navigation? Uh, nobody's hands raised. Okay. Anybody? So I, um, I'm, I'm gonna stick around here and answer any more questions and talk to you guys a little bit, but I am going to stop my recording because I think we have um, covered what we need to do in this 
WordPress 2020 tutorial. So uh, thank you very much for coming and asking questions.